Welcome into the breakdown. Phil Perry here, Ted Johnson there. I'm sure the Patriots, Ted, would love to move on from that Thursday night football loss to the Bills, but they've just given us way too much to talk about. The frustration, Ted, the frustration palpable at one Patriot play. Seems that way, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, the, the motto over there is, you know, avoid the noise, but the, the Patriot players are actually complicit in kind of creating some of this noise right now. You can tell frustrations are starting to boil, and the players are now unabashedly starting to criticize the coaches and sometimes maybe other players more than they have all season long, Phil. Yeah, by now, people have seen the video that went viral of Mac Jones screaming on the sidelines. Here's what he had to say after the game about that moment. What I said was about throwing it deeper in the short game. You know, I, I got to execute that part better, but it's the short game that we kept going to, which was working. But I felt like we needed chunk plays, and, um, you know, I shouted that out to kind of get everyone going. And that's emotional. That's football. I'm passionate about this game. And um, obviously, you don't want to get your emotions, let, you know, get the best of you. But, um, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it. We just got to be able to get the ball down here, like you said. We have plays, but we can't get to them. We're calling them, but they're just not working. So it looks we're throwing fly our routes, and that's we catch it. So it looks one way, but hopefully we can get more Mac more time so that he can make the plays. Just in case there was any question about it, the numbers certainly match up with what both Jones and Bourne are saying. Over the last five weeks, the Patriots have been among the least aggressive teams in the league. Jones's average pass on Thursday night was four and a half yards behind the sticks. That was the lowest number in the NFL for the third time in his last five games. And that's where we begin with our first breakdown. It's time now for more games. Brought to you by John Sewer and Drain Cleaning. The name to know when the drains don't flow. Ted, one player told me after the game it was a timid, quote-unquote, sort of attack that the Patriots had last night. We've got a play right here that I think illustrates that. You've written, what a drag at the top of the board because it's third and 14 here, Ted. And the Patriots throw a pass route that goes two yards beyond the line of scrimmage. Yeah, yeah, not uh, not what you're looking for, right, Phil? Okay, so the the uh, the Buffalo Bills uh, they're going to play in this third down and long situation. The Patriots run this kind of a wide receiver screen play it's with the drag route from the opposite side. We'll show you here in a second. But the the Buffalo Bills are going to play cover four because they want to have deep guys because it's third and fourteen. Uh, uh, on this down and distance. So what is cover four? You have your cornerbacks. They're going to drop back to the quarters. Safeties drop back to a quarter. So it's quarter, quarter, quarter. These guys, linebacker right here is going to drop to the curl flat. This linebacker is going to read number three, drop hook to three. And then you have curl flat over here, okay? And then these four down linemen, they're going to rush. So that is the coverage. Cover four to protect deep balls going, uh, considering it's third down and 14. What do the Patriots do? They're trying to run clear outs because they're trying to Set this up. It's a scheme play to get the ball to one Jacoby Myers, and I'm sure Patriots fans have seen this play because the Patriots like to come to this concept a lot, thus the predictability, and the Bills knew that as well. So these two uh, wide receivers out, Tyquan Thornton, Devontae Parker out here, they run these go routes to take these cornerbacks with them to give more space over here. This linebacker, Matt Milano, drops to the curl flat. What you have here on this side, Hunter Henry, and Ramondre Stevenson are going to be lead blockers for Jacoby Myers, okay? Uh, Hunter Henry, he chips right here, and then he slowly kind of comes out. Ramondre Stevenson at the snap of the ball, boom, he comes out right away. So it times up thus so that when Jacoby Myers starts his drag route, what a drag. He's about two yards past the line of scrimmage, and these guys are sinking, they're dropping, and there's a huge window, of course, and it's an easy throw for the quarterback. Boom, right there. He catches the ball about right here with two blockers out already on this side for him, so it sets up perfect. The only problem is the Buffalo Bills have seen this play time and time again. They're anticipating it. They break up on the ball, and when Jacoby Myers comes across on the drag route, these two linebackers are both coming up, making a play, and for about a five-yard gain when you're really <laughs> – you need passes that are down the field. The Patriots do this because it's the ball can come out fast because the offensive line has issues. It's an easy throw for the quarterback. The only problem is it's very predictable, and it's kind of a, a basic play scheme, if you will, for an NFL team to be running, and the, and the Buffalo Bills were all over it. We saw Mac Jones screaming about quick game on the line of scrimmage or on the sidelines, excuse me, during the game. Exactly this right. qualifies. Quick game, right? The ball's out in 1.8 seconds, and they don't come close to getting the yardage they need on a key third down, something they're going to have to get figured out moving forward. 
So it's a less aggressive offense and a less productive one. After scoring 14 offensive touchdowns over the first six games this year, the Patriots have half as many over their last six games. Total yards, third downs, red zone offense all falling off a cliff. The only improvement of late? Fewer turnovers. But Bill Belichick says any radical changes to this offense would be a bad idea. Yeah, I think we need to do what we're doing better. Um, yeah, I don't think at this point making a lot of dramatic changes is is it's too hard to do that. We we need we're if we can just do consistently what we're doing, uh, we'll I think we'll be all right. Monday Night Spotlight is presented by the Oakers Company, proud sponsor of the New England Patriots. Said, let's talk about this offense. Let's talk about that response that Bill Belichick had to the Greg Hill Show Yikes. on WEEI this morning. Do you agree with him? Is it too late for them to make a significant change on that side of the ball moving forward this year? Absolutely. Uh, from a schematic standpoint, it's, it's, it's really too late. The only thing I can think of, Phil, that if you want to drastically change what is going on with the offense is – an attitude change. You got to get these guys to believe and to buy in. How you do that? That's on Bill Belichick. That's why he makes all that money is to get him involved. The older veterans, the Devontae Parker, the Nelson Aguilar's, the Kenneth Bournes, those are guys, those are flag carriers. Those are guys that are alphas that are not being put in the offense a little bit more. You need to get those guys feeling good, happy, involved. And I just think that's what will help bring it all around. But as far as scheming and coming up with new kind of uh, concepts to surprise the opponent, that is, we're way past that. We're too far into the season. There's no going back for that. What about a change in play caller? What if it's not Matt Patricia? What if Bill Belichick takes over those duties? What if Bill Belichick hands those duties to Nick Cayley? You don't necessarily have to then change the language or change the plays that were installed all the way back in training camp. You just have a different voice, somebody who maybe has a different rhythm to the in-game play calling, maybe some different adjustments get made. I think that's what bothered players on Thursday night was they were late to adjust. So would that maybe work for this? I don't think that's a, that's a bad idea. Is he on staff? If he's on staff, that's not a bad idea because sometimes a different uh, you know, coach, play caller, maybe they see the game closer to how Mac Jones sees it. He sees like maybe the adjustments and things you can do to change just like Mac Jones sees it because it feels like Matt Patricia and Mac Jones – don't see the game of football from an offensive perspective the same way, and that's an issue. It doesn't have to be a drastic change, but no. it does feel like they need some kind of change here. They have five games left. They're trying to make a push for the postseason. Early edition, right after the show here on The Breakdown. It's at 6.30. It's our Bella Early Edition with Trenny. John Tomasi is in for Trenny Casey tonight, and he'll be the one taking a deep dive into the biggest sports stories of the day. Still to come here on The Breakdown, Stephon Diggs. Just the latest all-pro wideout to torch the Patriots. So Ted will show us what the Patriots can do to shore up their pass defense. Can you dig it? The Breakdown is back after this. In the immortal words of Michael Scott, well, 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 how the turntables for his first 20 <laughs> seasons as Patriots head coach, Bill Belichick lost to the Bills just five times. In the two-plus seasons since Tom Brady left town, Belichick and the Patriots are just 1-5 in five against their division rivals. All right, Ted, the Bills, dominant. In prime time, the Patriots can't show up in prime time. They can't show up against a division rival like Buffalo. Did you view this as sort of a, a passing of the torch kind of game, or was that something that happened last year during the playoffs? I think this game really kind of really, you know, kind of dr drove that uh, point home where it is, is a division for the Bills, and it is – until uh, the Patriots, you know, can, can compete. That was a non-competitive game. The last playoff game they had last year against the Bills was a non-competitive game. And clearly, they are the, uh, the toast of the AFC East for now and forever until the Patriots, you know, close that gap. But right now, they're a long ways away, Phil. Part of the reason it felt non-competitive, the Bills have a phenomenal wide receiver in Stephon Diggs. These guys are loaded up across the NFL, and the Patriots, it feels like, are seeing one every week. We knew coming out of the bye that the Patriots would have their hands full with some of the best wideouts in the NFL down the stretch here. Their numbers so far, presented by your New England Ford dealers and Ford trucks, built Ford tough. After Justin Jefferson got fat and happy on Thanksgiving, the Bills repeatedly fed Stephon Diggs last Thursday, including on Buffalo's first touchdown of the game. And that brings us to our next breakdown. Back out here for board games, brought to you by John Sewer and Drain Cleaning, the name to know when the drains don't flow. Ted, the Patriots continuing to have their issues checking number one receivers. Stephon Diggs, a big day against New England on Thursday night. You have on an island written at the top of the board. That doesn't sound like a phenomenal idea. 
if I'm the Patriots defense, but why did they choose to go one-on-one -on -one with Stephon Diggs here? This is their first <laughs> touchdown of the night. Yeah, your guess is as good as mine, Phil. I'll be honest with you. I'm not sure why they did, but they did. They put Jonathan Jones one-on-one -on -one with Stephon Diggs in the red zone. Maybe out in the field, I can understand that, but in the red zone, teams are always looking for their best guys, okay? So the Patriots are, or excuse me, the uh, Buffalo Bills, they're on the eight-yard line, clear the red zone. They put uh, Jonathan Jones on him man-to-man. Uh, -man. The Patriots are playing man-to-man -man over here, okay? Um, uh, that's, that, that is their coverage. But they do not give help. Jabril Peppers is playing the strong safety uh, position right here. They do not give help with Jabril Peppers on Jonathan Jones, which is very interesting. So here we go. The route combination is you have two backside posts uh, on this side. They end up, let me just uh, tell you this, they end up uh, being open eventually. Um, they pass off the coverage from this uh, DB over to uh, um, Dev McCourty. Dev McCourty, thank you. He takes over that coverage right here. He replaces this DB, goes with this guy. And then right here, though, here's where we want to focus. Jonathan Jones, he lines up on the inside of Stephon Diggs, clearly saying to, uh, that he doesn't have help on the inside. So he's got inside leverage. You see Stephon Diggs right here is in tight because he doesn't have a lot of room to work with on this side of the field. The sideline is right here. So it's important for him to get in, cheat in a little bit so that he has some space to work with right here. So at the snap of the ball, you will see Stefan Diggs does a great job of getting off the line of scrimmage and staying tight to Jonathan Jones, not going wide because he's going to need space on when he stems his route. So he gets around him really tight. All right, Jonathan Jones has his man-to-man. -man. He's playing inside leverage because he doesn't have help on the inside. This DB, Jabril Peppers, I'm not sure what he's doing on this play. He looks like a ball in high grass, lost. And here's where you have Stefan Diggs. So to get some space that you need right here, at the top of the route, they call it the stop of the stem. He fakes like he's going to go out, and that gets Jonathan Jones to kind of get his weight going that way, and then he breaks it back towards the corner, and there's enough space right there for the quarterback to hit him right here in the back end of the end zone. And these are where the weak points are in a lot of red zone teams' defenses. And Jonathan Jones, on an island out here, did not have help, and he got exploited. And Stephon Diggs, though, ran a perfect route for where they were on that part of the field. A great job by Buffalo. Tough, tough night for Jonathan Jones. And to be honest with you, there was a lot of guys open. This tight end was open on this play. This wide receiver coming across streaking was open on this play. He had multiple options on that play. He chose to go to Stephon Diggs and hit it for their first touchdown. Patriots a little undersized at the cornerback position, especially when Jalen Mills is out as he was on Thursday. It's not going to get any easier for them against some receivers with size. Coming up, DeAndre Hopkins, Devontae Adams, so something they are going to have to get cleaned up for sure. It's time for my report card. My report card is presented by the Massachusetts School of Law. As always, check out NBCSportsBoston.com for more on the reasoning behind these grades. When you get blown away at home by Josh Allen and co, there aren't going to be many good grades to go around. But for now, we're going to focus on the defensive backs and that D, the Patriots secondary. It's supposed to be one of the strengths of this team. It has been for large chunks of the year, but just not up to snuff last week. And that brings us to Ted Neek, which is presented by Shaw's, perfecting the art of fresh. And Ted is going to explain to us maybe something that Jonathan Jones or any Patriots corner who's in that situation on an island against a great receiver could do so that the outcome could be a little bit different. Yeah, so this is a tough cover. Jonathan Jones on Stephon Diggs, he doesn't have any help, so no middle of the field safety help. So he's got him one-on-one. -on -one. The one thing that helps Jonathan Jones is that they're to the boundary, right? So the sideline's right there. So that is essentially Jonathan Jones' help is the fact that the sideline is so close uh, on this side of the formation, okay? He, you can tell that he has no safety help because of the way he aligns. If you have safety help, the defender in, 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 in here, the defender will line up outside cheating to almost force the player to go that way. Jonathan Jones at the snap of the ball, he is inside, okay? And what he, his mistake is, is at the top of the route, and we'll show you what Jonathan Jones did uh, giving up this touchdown. So at the snap of the ball, say, hey, Stephon Diggs gets a great job, gets off the line of scrimmage, goes right past. Jonathan Jones is, is really too aggressive, and he gets right up into his inside hip just too much like this. And that affords Stephon Diggs the ability to – uh, head fake outside and then burst outside and just that little space is all they need for a completion right there. Let's do it again. What should Jonathan Jones have done differently? He's up there. He's, he's ready to go. He's, he's uh, I got you, Stephon Diggs. Okay, he's not afraid of him. Say, hey, he gets off. Boom. You got to trail technique and you got to stay a little bit behind him. So if the, you can play this way, you can undercut. But if you... 
breaks inside, you can undercut that. Look at the hips, don't look at the head. The hips don't lie, the head will. As the head goes out this way, boom, the hips go this way. Undercut it and you can make a play. That's what Jonathan Jones did wrong on that play. You gotta get in a better trail technique and not get so far up on his hip like that to, to uh, suck on that, uh, that head fake. Always difficult to go against an elite quarterback who has an elite receiver alongside him, where the Patriots want to be sound each and every week, is in the run game, but they weren't perfect there either. They were pretty good, 3.6 yards per carry, but it felt like when the Bills needed yards, they could get them. That Diggs touchdown capped a nine-play, 82-yard drive that chewed up nearly five minutes of clock. This gets to our run game conversation. The Bills did a lot of clock chewing on Thursday night. They held the ball for more than 38 minutes. As of now, it's the third year in a row that Buffalo has possessed the ball more than any other Patriots opponent in a non-overtime game. Matthew Judon, what happened? It was short plays, intermediate plays, and it just kept seeming like they would just get a first, a first down. Uh, and right there, you you really want to get off the field, uh, put four stops back to back. You want to get off the field. Uh, it, just, it just seemed like you know they were just getting five, four, first down, five, four, three, first, you know, first down, and, and that's kind of how it went. And they just uh, they just worked the whole, they worked the clock, and they worked the whole field. And that clock melted away all night long. We've got Tom Giles. We've got Eddie House with us. They're going to help us break down what was going on with that Patriots run defense. Make sure you're watching these guys. 7 o'clock, pregame live. Celtics, they're going to be all over. Right now we're talking some football. Eddie House is going to be a nose tackle for Ted yep. Johnson, our, our resident linebacker. And Giles and I, because we looked the part, we're going to be playing on the offensive line. All right, awesome. So Eddie's going to use uh, nice enough to be my nose tackle right here. All Let's right, get it. Eddie. Let's get it. My man. All right. And so here's problem, part of the problem with the, the Patriots right now. So these, the offensive linemen, okay, they are taught to, they double team the down linemen. And then they work up to the second level, which was where I'm going to play. I'm going to play linebacker. The problem was with the Patriots and a lot of their uh, running, you know, when they're out there against the run, they have smaller personnel. They have strong safeties playing linebacker and not necessarily these big thumpers like I used to be where you can come downhill. So these guys are a little bit smaller and they're not as adept at playing the run technique like you need to. So let's just show you kind of what was happening the other night to the Patriots, okay? So I'm off the line linebacker. I'm more like, a, a, you know, like a, uh, like a Kyle Duggar, if you will, and Adrian Phillips, a smaller guy. And so they don't know what they're, they're doing as, as well as the linebackers. This is what was happening, okay? So the uh, Buffalo Bills offensive line, they're going to double team Eddie. Said hike. All right, and this linebacker is late getting down on the uh, double, and he's not taking the double. So that lineman comes off on the linebacker, and now there's a natural seam right here. And that's what you don't want. You're supposed to build a wall. There's seams. And so the, the Buffalo Bills running backs were exploiting that. Now, go back, you guys, and let's show what at home what you were supposed to do. These guys that are off the line linebackers in the middle of the, of the field, they have to play downhill and quote unquote, take the double off of the lineman, that would be, Eddie, Eddie would appreciate that, all right? So this is how it's supposed to look. All right, boys, here we go. Said, huck, here he comes, come downhill. Look at that, and we have a wall right there. Me and Eddie have a wall right there. You're not getting through here, you're not getting through there, and that's the way it's supposed to look. Come down, play downhill, take the double off the, off the, the, uh, the beat lineman, build that wall, they have no seams, now you stop the run. I think Eddie House was Woo. a little bit of a freelancer there. I'm not sure Bill Belichick would be <laughs> completely <laughs> appreciative of the one-gapping technique. Technique. technique when the entire defense <laughs> trying to two-gap, but great job by these guys. Thanks, Patriots going to be looking oh, to make sure they're on their P's and Q's in the run game for sure against the Cardinals. Giles, House, the best. Again, 7 o'clock, pregame live. Tuesday, 6 o'clock. That's tomorrow. Catch another edition of Quick Slants. Tom Curran will be joined by the great Kay Adams. It's presented by your local New England Honda dealers. Up next, the Patriots get ready to hit the road. <laughs> Can a trip out west save their season? Much more on the breakdown right after this. Patriots hit the road and head west for back-to-back -back games against two teams with some New England connections. Former Patriots quarterback Cliff Kingsbury and the Cardinals, they're heading in the wrong direction. Arizona just one in six at home this year. The Cards have the second worst scoring defense in the NFL. Josh McDaniels and the Raiders, meanwhile, turning things around after a slow start. Vegas has won three straight and is quite used to close games. Monday Night Spotlight was presented by the Oakers Company, proud sponsor of the New England Patriots. Ted, I put it to you. Can the Patriots save their season these next two weeks? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You, you, they sure can. I mean, you had teams come back this week. I mean, the Jets lost. The Chargers lost. Uh, there's, it's, so there's, there's an opportunity for 
you, but you got to beat Arizona. Go out there, you beat Arizona, um, and that's the first step. Because if you don't beat Arizona, and they're going to be staying out there to play the Raiders on the very next week, that's going to be a long kind of down week. They need to go out there, and they need to win. Go play the Raiders at 7-6, and six, beat them. You come back from that two-game road trip, 8-6, and six, it feels a lot different around here. That Cardinals game could be tough, though. We talked about it. DeAndre Hopkins, a true number one, and Kyler Murray, a scrambling yeah. quarterback, something the Patriots have had issues with. Meanwhile, that Sunday night game, or what was supposed to be a Sunday night game against the Raiders the following week, flexed out. Is this a sign of the times here, Ted, that the Patriots have been bumped to play at 4 o'clock on Sunday rather than in prime time? Crazy to me. Shocking. I mean, let's, let's face it. The, the Patriots have always been must-see TV and prime time games galore every single year. This is a signal to the Patriots and, and to, the, at least to the owner that the, the Patriots ain't what they used to be, Phil. They're just not as exciting, and the record shows that they're just not a team that people want to watch as much anymore. Ted, we'd be remiss if we didn't say happy birthday. The big guy celebrated hey. a big old birthday over the weekend. Thank I'm sure sir. nowhere you'd rather spend it than right here on the breakdown with love us. Love working with my guys. This is, this is where I'm happiest is right here. So well, we on my you. birthday, I would rather be here with you than anywhere else. We love you. Thank the people you, love you. We'll be right back here next week after that Patriots-Cardinals game on Tuesday. So we'll see you then. Stick around. Early edition with John Tomasi coming at you right now. John.